بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي قال عز وجل هو الذي ارسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون Today inshallah ta'ala we're going to talk about a extremely 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 important subject and this subject is connected to many other subjects and the subject is why mahdi why do we do do we talk about mahdi do we need mahdi because we need a hero is it about hero worshiping or is there something more to it so i want to make this very clear to you so that if you know what is the real purpose of mahdi why the prophet talked about the mahdi okay there is a proper islamic res- uh, approach to understanding issues like this which i will share with you inshallah ta'ala today and then we will look at the issue of the mahdi now we are talking about a time in which there will be a lot of fitnas a lot of confusion it will be hard to tell what is right what is wrong And so in order to make it clear that this is wrong and this is evil and this is bad and this is good and this is the direction you need to go in the prophet talked about certain conditions certain people on the good side certain people on the bad side like the jal certain good people like Isa alayhi salatu wasalam and and the mahdi So this is one aspect of this that the mahdi and what he will do represents something and the things that need to be done at that time For example the mahdi will take bay'ah The sunnah of bay'ah is the Islamic way of organizing the people the Islamic and the masnoon the sunnah masnoon meaning sunnah the mathur this mean means from the companions of the prophet from the sunnah of the prophet in every way the only way of organizing muslims according to the sunnah of the prophet is by the process of bay'ah so when we talk about the mahdi for example and we know he takes bay'ah we know that this sunnah needs to be revived because it will not be a it will be it would have been become a dead sunnah because the idea of muslim leadership on its own terms would be dead and so not only are we going to be looking for mahdi we're going to be looking to revive the sunnahs the mahdi will revive so that when he when he does those things it would have become common knowledge by that time people are not going to just nowadays give bay'ah to the mahdi out of nowhere somebody is going to have to teach that so that that process actually takes place this is why very soon inshallah ta'ala i'm going to have probably a 2 hour lecture on bay'ah in which i'm going to probably share more than Uh, I don't know maybe 200 things of the prophet regarding bay'ah that will be in another time inshallah ta'ala but right now I'm talking about specifically the issue of why mahdi mahdi because it will be a time of fitan in the time of fitan things are confusing and in order to make things clear what will be the mahdi representing what will be the mahdi representing So this is what we're going to talk about because it is and why from the family of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so we're going to look at these things today in some detail and uh, inshallah ta'ala this will not be too boring but i have to show you the text because everybody needs the proof and i don't want you to say oh i heard it from sheikh umar no that's not good enough you have to see the sources and i need to show you the sources right so that we are all on the same pages and maybe maybe like the prophet said perhaps the people who you tell it to in the prophet when his last khutbah he said hear what i'm saying learn what i'm saying and perhaps you will explain it to others who will understand it better than the person who actually received it maybe i give it to you and you explain it to others and they actually understand it even better maybe i'm explaining it to you and then you understand it even better than me and then that's why we have the comment section in order to share our ideas now let's go back to the topic inshallah the topic is why mahdi so let us go ahead and look at this subject very carefully <clears throat> 
So I will be reading the English part. I'm going to maybe touch on some of the Arabic part to make it very, very clear. Now, before I go further, uh, the Islamic method is, for example, if the subject is, and let me just explain this so that we understand the methodology that is being used here, and it is the methodology of the ulama since a very long time, especially the asuliyin, who are a particular group that I really appreciate and, and love. And that is, and especially this fits in with the uh, some of the fuqaha of Iraq. Now, when there is a topic, you look, understand the topic and it's broader before you understand its subtopic. So, for example, if the topic is husna, Say good things to people. Or Allah says, Kalimatin tayyibatin, a good word is like a tree. Kalimatin tayyibatin, kashajaratin tayyibatin, asluha, uh, asluha thabitun wa farruha fis sama. So a good word is like a tree, its roots are deep down and its branches are up high. So now there's a general topic, this is the broad topic, right? Now under talking nicely, under talking, under, under talking and being nice and talking, saying good things to people will be the other topics. And if there is a topic that contradicts this broad topic, it will be still under this topic. So for example, cussing. La jahra illa bisu. There's no saying of wrong, la jahra, il, la, la jahra bisu illa man dhulim. There's, not, there's no saying evil words except for the one that is wronged. So that will come under this topic. You see, sometimes the topic is being kind, but here are the exceptions. So, and then the saying of the Prophet ﷺ, for example, say something good or be quiet, that will also come under here. But on the eye of the Qur'an allows you to say something uh, something is su, which can be considered uh, bad. Okay, you can say something bad if something wrong has been done to you, meaning you can you can uh, do something lethargic to feel better. You know, uh, if somebody cusses at someone but has been has injustice done to him, Quran allows this to some degree. So now the point I'm trying to say is that there's a broad topic and then there's a topic under that topic. There's so just keep this in mind. So when we are talking about the Mahdi. What are we talking about? We are talking about the family of the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet, when he talked about the Mahdi, emphasized over and over and over again, one hadith after another hadith, that he will be from my family, he will be from my family, he will have my family name, he will be of my stock, he will have... So, you know, and, and even going to the point of that he will be from the lineage of Hussein. Right? So, even to that point. Okay? So, now keep this in mind, inshallah ta'ala. So, now we're going to go from the broad to the specific. Okay? Now, uh, let's go from the broad to the specific, inshallah ta'ala. Now, this is the point that I really wanted to come to. This is now the broad topic. Okay? <coughs> Zayd bin Arqam, radiallahu anhu, he says that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Indeed, I am leaving among you that which if you hold fast to them, you shall not be misguided after me. So we have very the very famous saying of the Prophet, if you hold on to two things, Kitabullahi wa sunnati. The book of Allah is mentioned in one hadith where Allah, the Prophet's, the Prophet of Allah only mentions the book of Allah. In another hadith, the Prophet mentions, you will not go astray unless you you hold on to the Book of Allah and my Sunnah. Okay, so my the Book of Allah in one hadith, the Book of Allah and my Sunnah in one hadith, then in another hadith, Alaykum Sunnati wa Sunnatul Khulafa al Rashidin al Mahdiyin. Upon you is my Sunnah and the Sunnah of my Khulafa, which are of 30, of 30, of up to 30 years, which is Abu Bakr. Umar, Uthman, Ali, and six months of Hassan. Okay? Then there's another hadith. Uh, what I'm upon and my companions upon. Meaning what Quran calls radiallahu anhum wa radu'an. Allah is happy with them. Allah is pleased with them. And Allah is pleased with them. And they are pleased with Allah. They love Allah. Allah loves them. Okay? This is who Islam is historically from the Nabu of the Prophet to the, khula, to the companions of the Prophet. فَإِنْ آمَنُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ If you believe as they, meaning they as in the companions of the Prophet, as they believe. فَإِنْ آمَنُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ فَقَدْ اِحْتَدَوْا Then you're guided. If the Prophet and his companions are your guide, then you're guided. 
If you turn your backs, then you'll be just differing with one another. Okay, the time period that needs to be of your focus, of your study, of your attention, is the time period from the Prophet's Nabuwa till the life of the end of the life of the companions of the Prophet. These are the people Allah is pleased with. And the, the rise of the Ummah, first in the hands of the Prophet, then Abu Bakr, then Uthman, uh, Umar, then Uthman, and then the, you can say, gradual decline that started after that. Okay? Now, why am I saying this? Because the other thing the Prophet mentioned for guidance is his family. Now, this is in very, very authentic sayings of the Prophet ﷺ, like Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, right? Uh, so, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, Indeed, I am leaving among you. Now, whose Mahdi is from the family of the Prophet? So, just keep this in mind. And who left the, uh, the symbolism? And who left the legend, the legacy of standing up to tyranny, to who changed the Khilafa into Malukiya from Khilafa to kingship when it was changed? Who stood up to this change and did not want this change? And they too did what the Mahdi did. And I'm talking here specifically about someone no less than the grandson of the Prophet ﷺ, Hussein radiallahu anh. Abdullah bin Zubair had also done this. This is another very long topic which I can't go into right now. But I'm shortening it only by certain... Because the family of the Prophet rose up to revive Khilafah many, many times in Islamic history, which are all very important parts of Islamic history and a very sad part of Islamic history. But Hussein and Mahdi, I'm going to refer to them specifically because of a statement that I read from Imam Niqayyam. And he said, because... Imam Hussein radiallahu anh, because you know he had he, he kind of failed in his mission to stand up to the tyranny and replace it with Khilafa. Allah will compensate that with the Mahdi. Meaning these are people from the family of the Prophet who became guides for the Ummah, who became a focal point of okay, this is what a jama' is for, this is what bayar is for, this is what revival of justice is for. So keep this in mind as we read these sayings of the Prophet. Indeed, I am leaving amongst, among you that which if you hold fast to them, you shall not be misguided after me. One of them is greater than the other. The book of Allah, which automatically includes who? Automatically includes the sunnah of the Prophet. Automatically includes radiallahu anhum radu. And all the companions of the Prophet are already, that Allah said about, As-sabiquna awwaluna min al-muhajirin wal-ansar. The first and the foremost amongst the muhajirin and ansar. Radiallahu anhum radu. And Allah is happy with them. They're happy with Allah. So this group that sacrificed with the Prophet, stood with the Prophet in, in the Makki period, then in the Badr, then in the Uhud, then Ihzab, and then, then you know, Baytul Ridwan that happened. Then they stood with the Prophet through thick and thin. Okay? Those people. And in addition to that, you will find the family of the Prophet to be a role model for the Muslims. And the role of the Mahdi is that at a time where, you know, the teachings of Qur'an would have faded. The teachings of the Sunnah would have faded. The, the history of the companions of the Prophet would have faded. And there would be a need for somebody to kind of like revive all this. That will now be done with the fourth level, you can say, of reviving this. And that is the somebody from the family of the Prophet ﷺ. Okay? So the Prophet's going to talk about this and make this very clear. So one of them is greater than the other. The Book of Allah, and as I said, the Book of Allah includes Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, the companions of the Prophet, the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, and the Book of Allah obviously contains itself. Is the rope extended from the sky to the earth, and my family, Ithri, the people of my house, and they shall not split, meaning that my, what my family stands up for, and the my house, my family and the Qur'an will be together. They will not be split. Okay? And what does the Prophet mean here, they will not be split? That in these critical times, like if Hussein radiallahu anh had not stood up at that critical, critical, critical time, we may have been confused about Islam today. But because he stood up to Malukiya, he stood up to kingship, and he stood up to tyranny, it became clear, oh, this is, this is the right way. Okay? 
So the book of Allah is the rope extended from the sky to the earth and my family, the people of my house. They shall not split until they meet at the Haud. Okay? So when... Uh, so, so, so the, there are members of the family's prophet. Now, this is a longer discussion, which I'll have one day, inshallah. Because, uh, My promise does not reach, Allah said, about Ibrahim and his children, because prophets were going to come from his children. So the same way Allah had uh, revi people reviving the deen in the family of the prophet, which also includes the wives of the prophet, as we will see in the uh, hadith to come. Uh, the book of Allah is a rope extended from the sky to the earth and my family, the people of my house. They shall not split until uh, they meet at the Haud and look at how you deal with them after me. Because those people who deal with the Prophet's family, especially the just amongst them, they're on the right side. And the people who deal with the Prophet's family harshly, they're on the wrong side. And as much as it is impossible to imagine someone treating someone's, from, someone from the family of Prophet harshly, guess what Muslims did over and over and over and over and over again. Muslims are the ones who killed the family of the Prophet I saw the Messenger of Allah during Hajj on the day of Arafah. He was upon a ca camel, Taswa, giving a khutbah. So he said, O oh people, indeed I have left amongst you. That which will, if you hold fast to it, you shall not go astray. The book of Allah in my family, the people of my house. Ahli Bayti here also refers to his wives because they were a role model. You know, the Prophet, Indeed, in the Messenger of Allah, there is the best of examples. But the Prophet could not be an example for what? For women. He couldn't be the example. This is why the Prophet needed many wives to be to fill that shoe of being a role model for all types of women. The Prophet had many wives and they, alhamdulillah, this is why Allah said about the wives of the Prophet in Quran, You're not like any other women. Right? If you do good, you get twice the reward because you're sitting in a very important position. And, and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised this. So the wives of the Prophet and the family of the Prophet is in a very special position, as you'll see. Okay? And so we're, remember, we're talking about why Mahdi, but it starts with understanding the role of the family of the Prophet throughout Islamic history. It starts with Hussein, and then in the early period ends with Nafsu Zakiya, Muhammad bin, Abdu, uh, Muhammad bin Abdullah. His name was Muhammad bin Abdullah also. And some people considered him the Mahdi. And he was supported by Imam Abu Hanifa. And he was supported by Imam Malik. And he rose up against the Umayyads. And he was from the family of the Prophet. But he was, he was, he was defeated. In this world he was defeated. In the real world to come he was successful. I went to Hussein bin Sabrah and Amr bin Muslim to Zayd bin Arqam radiallahu anhum. And we sat by his side. Hussein said to him, Zayd, you acquired great merits. You saw the Messenger of Allah, listened to him like talking, fought by his side in different battles, offered salat behind him. Zayd, you have indeed earned great merits. Could you narrate to us what you heard from the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Zayd said, by Allah, I have grown old and have spent up uh, my age and I have forgotten some of the things which I remembered in connection to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So accept what I narrate to you. Do not compel me to narrate what I fail to narrate. He then said, one day the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stood up to deliver a khutbah at a watering place known as Khum between Mecca and Medina. He praised Allah, exalted Him and exhorted us and said, Amma ba'du, after this, it means, Amma ba'du means after this. Oh people, I'm a human being. I'm about to receive a messenger, meaning the angel of death, from my Rabb. And I will respond to Allah's call, meaning I won't say no. But I'm leaving with you two weighty things. The first is the book of Allah, which there is right guidance and light. So hold fast to the book of Allah and adhere to it. He exhorted to us, hold fast to, a, to the book of Allah. And then he said, the second is the members of my household. I remind you to be kind to the members of my family. I remind you to be kind to the members of my family. And the Prophet is saying this because history showed us that we treated the family of the Prophet ﷺ rather in a very unbecoming and a very uh, tyrannical way. Hussein, Hussein said to Zayd, 
Who are the members of his household? O Zayd, aren't his wives the members of his family? Whereupon Zayd said, his wives are the members of his family, but here the members of his family are those whom zakat is forbidden. He asked, who are they? Zayd said, Ali and the offspring of Ali, Aqil and the offspring of Aqil, and the offspring of Jafar and the offspring of Abbas. Hussein asked, for all of them, the acceptance of zakat is forbidden. Zayd radiallahu anh said, yes. And another narration said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, I am leaving behind two weighty things. One of them is the Book of Allah. That is the strong rope of Allah. Whoever holds firmly to it will be the guided and whoever leaves it will go astray. So this is another narration. So now, that is the importance of the family of the Prophet. That The Prophet said, look, look at my family, be nice to them, and they will be a source of guidance from you, for you, not in the absolute sense. In the absolute sense, it's only Qur'an, it's only the Sunnah of the Prophet and the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. But at critical times, you will see again and again in Islamic history that the family of the Prophet ﷺ stands up and fights for justice. Okay? The Prophet said وسلم, if only one day of this world remained, Allah would lengthen that day according to the version of Zayda, till he raised up in it a man who belongs to me or to my family. See, this is the underlining word, my family. Whose father name is the same as my father's, who will fill the earth with equity and justice. Meaning, this is what Muslims need to strive for. This is the thing to strive for in end of times. Because this will be the biggest issue of the end of times, justice. Who will fill the earth with equity and justice as it has been filled with oppression and tyranny. Okay. Sufyan's version says the world will not pass away before the Arabs are ruled by a man from my family. Whose name will be as mine. Abu Dawud said in the version of uh, Omar and Abu Bakr. I saw the messenger of Allah sallallahu during Hajj. On the day of Arafah, upon, he was upon his camel, Qaswa, giving a khutbah. So he said, O people, indeed, I have left amongst you that which if you hold fast to, you shall not go astray. The book of Allah in my family and the people of my, ho the people of my house. Ahlu bayti. Here, bayti, ahlu bayti means specifically, for sure, specifically his, his wives. But because of the hadith of the, uh, where the, put, the Prophet put the cloth and the cloak around, Ali and Fatima, so that also includes them because the Prophet wanted that promise that's mentioned in Quran to include them. What The Messenger of Allah said, Indeed, I am leaving among you that which if you hold fast to them, you shall not be misguided after me. One of them is greater than the other. The Book of Allah is a rope extended from the sky to the earth and my family, the people of my house, and they shall not split until they meet at the Hawd. So look at how you deal with them after me. And like I said, the Muslims treated the family of the Prophet very negatively. So now the question I want to ask for you is this. When will the Mahdi know that he's the Mahdi? When will the Mahdi know he's the Mahdi? So now this is what we're going to deal with. Umm Salma reported, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, saying, How will a man who comes against his will be swallowed up by the earth? Messenger of Allah. He replied, all will be swallowed up, but each raised according to his intention on the Day of Judgment. The Messenger of Allah said, this house will be attacked by an enemy, and they will be swallowed up by the earth in Bayda. So this is referring to the attack on Kaaba. And if you actually read the Ahadith carefully, it shows that there will be many attacks, and many times the earth will be swallowing. But when will the Mahdi know he's the Mahdi? When this event takes place. When this event takes place, there's other ahadiths that when you see this event place, this is when people will know also he's the Mahdi. And this is when the Mahdi will be sure that he's Mahdi. Before this, you know, he will be trying to do the right thing. But when this event of the swallowing takes place, this is the event that the even, uh, maybe the people at that time will also tell him that this is the ahadith they tell us about this event. So the Roman Empire, the Roman army that was coming against you has been swallowed. So you are definitely the Mahdi. Because things may be confusing. Troops will not cease to attack the house until an army of them is swallowed by the earth. Okay, and this is when the Mahdi will also know that he's the Mahdi. The Prophet, an army will raid the Kaaba, and when it reaches the desert land, all of them will be swallowed by the earth. She asked Aisha radiallahu anha, O Messenger of Allah, why all of them? 
He answered, all of them will be swallowed by the earth, but they will be raised for judgment according to their intentions. Meaning when the punishment of Allah comes, it comes collectively. It takes the good and the bad in everybody, but on the day of judgment, you'll be raised according to your intentions. Okay? An army will be sent towards the house. And when they are in Beda, they will first and the, uh, they first and the last of them will be swallowed up by the earth. And those in the middle will be saved. I said, what if there are believers amongst them? He said, it will be graves for them. Okay. The people among my nation will drink wine, calling it by another name. Musical instruments will be played for them and engaged in singing and singing girls will sing for them. Allah will cause the earth to swallow them up. So this shows that this, uh, these, these, this may be uh, effect of taking the oil out and out and out and out and out. Eventually, it will go to a point where the earth begins to sink and the desert begins to sink. And this will not happen only to the army of the Roman Empire, but will happen at other times where the earth begins to sink, as I was mentioning. The Prophet mentioned that that army would be swallowed up by the earth. And Umar Salma said, O Messenger of Allah, perhaps there will be some who were forced to join them. He said they will be resurrected according to their intentions. So may, there maybe there will be some good people amongst them, but they will be forced. An invading army will come towards the house until they will, are in Beda. The middle of them will be swallowed. Now over there it said, if in the previous hadith, the middle of them will be saved. Here, the middle of them will be swallowed by the earth. The first of them will call out to the last of them, and they will be swallowed up until there are no one left of them except a fugitive who will tell them of what happened to them. When the army of Hujjaj came, we thought that they were the ones mentioned in this hadith. A man said, I bear witness that you do not attribute a lie to Hafsa, and that Hafsa did not attribute a lie to the Prophet So meaning this, this event uh, is not referring to the event uh, that, is, that they thought, that maybe this is referring to the army of Hajjaj. It was not. So this is something that will happen at the time of the Mahdi. Okay, moving on a little bit. Uh, for this one, I want to show you the Arabic, inshallah. The Prophet said, because it's very important hadith. So when we're talking about the Mahdi, we're talking about the importance of justice. But to have justice, you need a Jama'ah, you need an Amir, you need a Shura, you need Hijrah, you need Jihad, you need all these things. This is why the Prophet said, now this is the hadith. Now listen to it very carefully. قَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم, أَنَا أَعْمُرُكُمْ بِخَمْسٍ I command you of five things. I'll show you the English in a second. I command you of five things. Allah ordered them to me. Five things you have to do. It's a command. It's not bunya. Islam is built upon five things. That's just jumla khabari. It's an informational sentence. This is a command. I'm commanding you five things. Allahu amarani bihinna. Allah commanded them to me. Sama'awata. Listen and obey. Listen and obey who? To the Amir. Which Amir? Who, who guides according to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet. And to do what? Jihad wal Hijrah. To do jihad, struggle in the cause of Allah. And Hijrah, leave. Leave the grid. Leave the cities. Establish, go outside the grid. Hijra wal jihad wal jama'ah and to be with the jama'ah, to be with a group. Yadullahi fawq al jama'ah. What does the Mahdi represent? Mahdi represents this concept. This is the concept that's become dead. And this is the concept that is so important to understand that the Prophet after this he says, Man al jama'ah. Right? Whoever leaves the jama'ah, whoever is not in a jama'ah, right? Qayda uh, shibr, even by hand span. قَدْ خَلَعْ رُقْبَةَ الْإِسْلَامِ عَنْ أُنُقِهِ إِلَّا أَنْ يُرَجَعْ مَنْ دُعْ He will leave the fold of Islam according to this hadith. He will leave Islam according to this. Okay? Except that he comes back. Okay? Uh, uh, he, he will go to the hellfire. Okay? فَقَالَ رَجُلٌ So a man stood up and asked the Prophet, يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهُ Messenger of Allah in Salah wasama, even if he prayed and fasted, qala in Salah wasama, even if he prayed and fasted, but he has to be part of a jama'ah. This is what the Mahdi represents. He represents the bayah, the jama'ah, the jihad, the hijrah, the struggle to establish Islam. Wa in Salah wa asama, fadu bi da'wat Allah ladi 
And then the Prophet says, look, you have to call by what Allah has called you. Call yourselves Muslims, Mu'mins, and Ibadullah. Now let's look at the English of this. Okay, so it's absolutely clear what I'm trying to say. And I command you, the Prophet said, of five, that Allah commanded me, listening and obeying, jihad and hijrah and jama'ah. For indeed, whoever parts from the jama'ah, the measure of a handspan, he will be cast off the yoke of Islam from his neck unless he returns. And whoever calls with a call of jahiliyyah, then he is from the calls of hell. A man said, O Messenger of Allah, even if he performs salat and fasts, so he said, even if he performs salat and fasts, so call with the call that Allah has named you. Call not your labels of Shia, Sunni. We need to get rid of these. We need to just agree upon what is Islam? What is the book of Allah? What is the, where is the guidance? We need to agree upon this and go back to our original labels because our new labels, our new labels are going to divide us and make us fight with one another. And this is very clear in the hadith. These labels will be used for us to fight against one another and to kill one another and to do harm to one another. And so let's go back to save ourselves from that to the original names. Muslimin, Mu'mineen, Ibadullah. Okay, now let me end by mentioning finally why the Mahdi. He is, is the family of the Prophet's a source of guidance. Mahdi is somebody specific in the family of the Prophet who is a source of guidance. In a time of fitna and chaos where people not know right from wrong, so the Prophet pointed to a particular person to follow his example. And the Prophet described what he will do so that when those things that he will do are dead, like the bayr, the jama, the amir, the jihad, the hijrah, all these things, when they will be dead, you will know looking at the Mahdi, these are the things that need to be revived. So when the Mahdi comes, these things take place. Now, let me share with you one more thing. Uh, actually, I have two more things to share with you, inshallah. Now, this is very important because the point here is there has to be people reviving the sunnas that the Prophet talks about when he talks about the Mahdi. So the Prophet said, a man called Al-Harith bin Harith will come forth from Ma Warahu Nahr. His army will be led, an army, his army will be led by a na man named Mansur, who will establish and consolidate the things for the for Muhammad's family as Quraysh consolidated them for the Prophet of Allah. Every believer must help him, or he said, respond to his sermons. So there will be other people trying to help the Mahdi and they will be doing what the Mahdi will do and they will revive those sunnas of the Prophet that will be dead to organize ourselves. And another example of this is the Prophet Sallallahu talking about Yahruduna min al Khurasani Rayatusud, black flags of the army will come out from Khurasan. And other sayings of the Prophet Sallallahu about groups and groups of people coming to join the Mahdi. And they will do with the Mahdi what they were doing before they met the Mahdi. Which is, now if there's an Amir of a Jama, and now they decide to go to the Mahdi, especially after the earth has swollen the army, they know that that's the Mahdi now. Now the guidance is clear that you have to give him bayah, right? Because anyone, after knowing that he's the Mahdi, says, no, 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 I'm not going to join him. He, he is doing it for his ego, okay, and not for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there may be many of those types too, I don't know. But my point is simply that in order to do what we have to do with the Mahdi, we have to revive the sunnas that the Mahdi will be using, like the sunnah of Bayr. Okay, finally, why the Mahdi? Because it is the desire of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that when I go before Allah, now imagine, what is the dua, dua we do for Ibrahim and Prophet Muhammad in every prayer? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad kama salli ala Ibrahim. The al of Muhammad, the family of Muhammad, the people of Muhammad, they first and foremost include, because you know Ibrahim, imagine Ibrahim is in front of Allah. And then who is with him? All the prophets. 
Dawood and Suleiman and you know all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Musa and uh, Yusuf and Yunus and all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be with Ibrahim and then finally Prophet Muhammad that is the greatest gift you know in one way the greatest gift to give to Allah is your life but the other great gift to give to Allah is your family upon families offspring after offspring all sacrificing them for the cause of Allah spending their own entire lives, generation after generations, for the cause of Allah. And this is what the Prophet wanted for himself too. Just as Ibrahim will be there and say, look at my son Ishaq and Ismail, and look at his grandson uh, Is uh, Yaqub, and all the other Prophets after that. Imagine how Ibrahim will feel, and the others will feel that. Look at my offsprings, alhamdulillah. The Prophet also wanted that when he goes in the Day of Judgment, he also has offspring to show. This is my family. This is what my family died in the cause of Islam too. I gave my family up. I gave my entire family up for the cause of Allah. And so this was a heartfelt desire of the Prophet because of his lineage to Ibrahim wasalam. And so this is the greatest, one in one way the greatest gift is you give up your life. But the other way, the greatest gift is to be able to present to Allah, Allah, families upon families in your service. Okay? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to do both levels of work with our families and with ourselves. So finally, inshallah, before we end, <coughs> the main reason for the Mahdi. The Prophet was sent specifically to the Arabs. The Prophet said, Inni ji'atu ilaykum khasatan. I've been sent as a messenger to you specifically. And the Prophet ﷺ established Islam as a political, social, just order in front, in his own lifetime, he saw Islam being established in the Arabian Peninsula where he was specifically sent. هُوَ الَّذِي بَعَثَ فِي الْأُمِّيِّينَ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ he, is, he was a messenger of, of the Ummiyin specifically. And then, وَآخَرِينَ مِنْهُمْ لَمَّا يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ The others who have not yet joined the Prophet. These are the, the non-Arabs who we're going to now join later on. But in this process of globalization, now when the Mahdi will be there, people from different parts of the world will be coming to the Mahdi. People from Africa will be coming to Mahdi in groups. In fact, there is a narration that I will pull out one day, inshallah, that there will there's a big ship that will come from Africa to the Mahdi. Then people from the east will be coming to the Mahdi. Then other people will be calling towards them. And from the whole world, all the global areas, all the Muslims will now converge to where the Mahdi is. The armies from all the different places will be coming together. And that will be the globalization. Now... When the Prophet was sent specifically to the Arabs, إِنِّي جِعْتُ إِلَيْكُمْ خَاصَّةً You know Allah says in Quran, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا كَافَّةً لِلنَّاسِ بَشِيرًا وَنَذِيرًا O Rasul, O Messenger of Allah, we've sent you to all of mankind. So the Prophet's risala, the messengerhood of the Prophet is to all of mankind. But he himself established Islam, a model for people to see in his own lifetime. <coughs> in the Arabian Peninsula amongst the Arabs. Now, that process, you know, the Prophet established it, and then that broke. Then all these other systems have come in its place. Kingship came in its place, democracy came in its place, communism came in its place, socialism came in its place. Finally, after trial and error, and trial and error, and trial and error, and man finally wanting, human beings finally wanting justice, they will have, that Khilafah again, that same system of the Prophet, Khilafah ala min Hajj al again, but this time it will be global in extent. And the reason is because when the Mahdi will be identified, the different Jama'ahs, the different groups that identify themselves with the Mahdi, you can say they're the Mahdiyun, you know, and these different people will, from different parts of the world, will come to the Mahdi and offer their strength and their support and they will put everything in their line on the line knowing that this is the right thing to do and because the prophet told us had already told us this is the right thing to do so the mahdi will 
played the function of the Prophet. You know, when he established Islam in Arabia, what did he say? Allahu mashhad. Allah, you bear witness. I established Islam. But now, when the global process will start, and the Mahdi will live for either seven years or nine years, I'll show you the hadith on that. When the global process, the globalization of the just world order will start, then in its first seven, eight, nine years, somebody from the family of the Prophet, on behalf of the Prophet, will witness Muhammad, my great grandfather, was sent to all mankind. And today, that system, that system that he was, he was sent to all mankind today, that system that he was sent with, that deen that he was sent with, that Islam that he was sent with, is being established around the globe. So this will be the other function of the Mahdi. He will be a witness. He will do shahada ala shahada. He will do shahada bearing witness for the Prophet ﷺ. On behalf of the Prophet, as a family member of the Prophet, bearing witness for the Prophet, for his function as a messenger to all mankind. So I will end here inshallah ta'ala. Uh, هُوَ الَّذِي بَعْصَ فِي الْأُمِّيِّينَ And then this is when, you know, I, in one day inshallah if I get a chance, I'll pull out that narration of Sahih Muslim also in which the Prophet uh, Aisha and the and that ayah is referred to. Allah sent his messenger, why? Allah sent his messenger with Al-Huda, the Quran, وَالدِّينِ الْحَقِّ and the true deen, لِيُذْهِرَهُ to make it dominated, to make it supreme. لِيُذْهِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّ over all other systems. Okay? And so the Mahdi will be a witness to this process. Now in this ayah, this particular ayah that I read, Generally, under the tafsir and most of the tafsir, under this ayah, the one of the ahadith that's quoted is about Isa alayhi salatu wasalam coming down and also being processed, a part of that process, which you can call today part of the process of the globalization, the globalization of Islam. Okay, may Allah forgive me and you. And uh, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Please do subscribe, share. And uh, leave your comments and thoughts, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.